Hello class, it's Ms. Augustine again. So now that you have learned about what a half-life is for a radioactive isotope, it's time to do a worksheet, uh, specifically the half-life of radioactive isotopes worksheet, the in your packet. So before we begin, I would like to review the steps to solving these kinds of problems. And they're really like little puzzles. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you want to do is identify what the information that you were given is. Then it's good to figure out what you're trying to solve for or the unknown. And sometimes you'll have to use a decay chart. So if you're given the amount that you started with and you're asked how much is left, you could use your decay chart, or if you're, you're told there's this many grams left, what was the mass at time zero? So either way, when you're doing that, you're going to use your little decay chart. And then sometimes you're going to use the quote-unquote number of decays equation, where you'll recall we said that the number of decays is equal to the time elapsed divided by the time it takes for a half-life. So now we're ready to begin. Half-Life of Radioactive Isotopes Worksheet, and we're going to start at the beginning with number one. The problem asks how much of a 100-gram sample uh, of gold-198, and this gold-198 is just information. It doesn't really help you solve the problem. It's just an FYI. Um, how much of that 100-gram sample is left after 8.10 days if its half-life is 2.7 days? So we'll start by laying out our variables. So T0, we had 100 grams. Time elapsed is 8.1 days. The time for a half-life to occur is 2.70 days. So then we can take our equation. The number of decays is equal to time elapsed over the half-life of time. And in this case, it's 8.10 days divided by 2.7 days. And that leads us to learn that three decays took place. That means that three different decays took place, and each time a decay took place, half of the sample went away. So that means we have to set up our little chart, and I've set it up for you. So the table with time and amount, so at time zero, there was 100 grams. So after one decay, there would be 100 divided by 2, 50 grams. After another decay takes place, we would divide by 2 again. We'd have 25 grams. And after another decay takes place, we should have 12.50 grams left. So 12.5 grams is left. And the reason I rounded just to three sig figs is because these two numbers here for the time elapsed and T1 half were reported to you with three sig figs. So I stuck with three sig figs. The second one I want to solve for you is number four on the worksheet, which is a slightly different um, question. So in this case, they say, what is the half-life of technetium-99 if a 500-gram sample decays to 62.5 grams in 639,000 years? So let's think about this. We're given the amount at time zero, and we're given the time that elapsed. So we're trying to figure out what the half-life is. So in order to do that, we have to figure out how many decays took place. So now we're going to set up our little chart, and we're going to start with the amount that we were given. And we're just going to keep dividing by 2 until we get to 62.5 grams. So you can see I've done that for you. At time 0, we had 500 grams. After a um, decay takes place, we should have 250 grams left. After another decay, 125, and after another, we'll have 62.5 grams left. And Eureka, 62.5 is how much they told us. So now we know that three decays took place over a period of 639,000 years. So the number of decays is three. That means we can plug this information into our equation, remembering that the number of decays is equal to time elapsed divided by the time it takes for one decay, one half-life. So that means that 639,000 years divided by whatever 
half-life time occurs uh, is uh, would be three decays. So again, what we're going to do here is we're going to say, put another way, that 639,000 years represents three decays. So 639,000 divided by three is going to be our half-life time, and that comes out to 213,000 years. So you can see that you really need to look at each of these problems as a little puzzle, figure out what you were given, what you're trying to solve for, and work your way backwards or forwards, depending, to get the answer. So I hope this helps you um, in solving these problems. Now I'm going to say it is your turn to complete the worksheet, and once again, I will post all the answers to Google Classroom for you tomorrow. I wish I could be with you guys, um, and I'm hoping that you're able to do these problems without me um, and that you can help each other. Good luck with them, and again, I'll post answers tomorrow.